Welcome to Stroke of Genius Podcast Survivor Experience. I'm your host, Aaron Abla. I got a guest today that inspires, inspires me to no end. His name is Jeffrey Morse. I, I, to go through his accomplishments, his attitude after a stroke, I mean, makes me look like a newbie. Really, so... This media did just just a few of his accomplishments. Jeff does not let his stroke or deaths define him. We're going to find out how and why, how he does that. Not let stroke define him. I, in fact, I'm going to play an intro that is for, in his honor because you'll see it. You'll know why as soon as he sees it. And he maintains a can-do attitude. Get this. He's a flight instructor for an airline. He, he's a pilot, for Pete's sake. He also colors a book called Finding Forward. And if you're a surf survivor out there, aren't we all looking at the Find Forward I'm really, I'm really come to place if we're looking forward to Libby. So let me uh, bring him on the air, but, but let me play the intro. And when you see this intro, he'll see it. You know why it has to do with him. But here we go. Fire. And his man again, or the stars. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, Aaron. Thanks for having me on your show today. It's it's just such a pleasure to be here with you. You know, when people say that, Jeff, honestly, people like you are just I feel the same way about you. So I mean I I I I wish every stroke survivor could feel like you and me and where we take a stroke. And we turn it into something positive. And if you watch this on the replay, Stroke Survivor, like there is life at Stroke. You can't find it. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to talk to Jeff. And there's no guarantee that we're going to stay with the 30 minute podcast because I am just, I love people like this. But there is life at Stroke, and it's all in the mindset. 
It's uh, you don't have, I can't do that, do it. You have, I can do that, do it. Never mind, Jeff. It's, uh, so let's get right into it, Jeff. Introduce yourself. Well, I'm uh, Jeffrey Morris. I'm 59 years old. I'm an airline instructor uh, and somebody who has always loved and appreciated life. Uh, I've traveled the world uh, with my military job uh, flying, and I'm, I've also flown around the world with my uh, different airline jobs. So I, I feel like I, I look at the world with a uh, much brighter and positive lens, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, I'm 10 years into uh, what happened with my aneurysm surgery and um, the surgery causing a, a stroke on my spinal cord that paralyzed me from the neck down. But, um, uh, you know, that was that was a road bump. Um, I'm alive. Huh. I'm happy. And that's what matters. Um, I haven't let this slow me down. So I, I'm I guess I'm happy in some ways that it did happen because it put me in contact with even more absolutely wonderful people. Man, you were telling so much like me, and it's amazing. And, you know, I I basically want to throw my guts in the way because you know you're you're amazing to me, brother. You're just amazing. <laughs> and you, I, I did not know you were in the middle of a brain injury and surgery. I had a brain injury, subagnant brain injury mm -hmm. first, and then two weeks later, was well, and then come I, I am a stroke. So, but you were having, I'm assuming you have a craniotomy at the time or what? Tell me about it. Well, um, uh, the doctors found the aneurysm, which was on my right vertebral artery at the base of my skull. Uh, they didn't have to go um, inside my skull for the surgery. They went up through my groin, actually. And um, um, they were not only working on the aneurysm, but I had a dissected artery above it as well. So I had less than a 25% chance of surviving the surgery. And while they were in saving my life, the surgery actually caused a stroke on my spinal cord and paralyzed me from the neck down. So when I came out of it, uh, you know, they said, the good news is you survived. The bad news is uh, you're more than likely never going to walk again for the rest of your life. And I said, thank you to the doctor. But I said, you know, I understand your prognosis, but, you know, you're not inside my body. Um, my ability to walk is up to me, not up to you. So my intentions are the day that I leave this hospital, I'm going to walk out of this hospital, uh, despite whatever your prognosis is. And he uh, tapped me on the shoulder and uh, smiled, and um, onward I went. And six weeks later, it was ugly, but with a walker, uh, when they wheeled me up to the door, I couldn't feel the walker. I couldn't feel my legs underneath me, but I powered up out of that chair. And as ugly as it was, I managed to get one foot in front of the other to make it out to the car. And I lived by that promise. So I was very happy for that. I knew when I was in there going through this that there there wasn't any instruction book for somebody going through what we're going through. And that was the reason why I wanted to write the book. And I told myself from day one, if I could just help one person, uh, that would mean the very most to me and and I'm there and I've helped more than one person and I'm I'm grateful for that every day Jeff honestly I am so proud of you I mean so many strokes survivors out there live in utter darkness they wait they're waiting to die they feel that the life is over the blood stroke identify them but to something that you you know i'm assuming you were locked in the way you speak you were locked in your body you were totally paralyzed one time yeah well i was um everything from the neck up worked great it didn't affect my brain 
um, it, it was the stroke was literally the size of the point of a sewing needle. Uh, it was that small. And I said to myself, you know, OK, I'm down right now, but I'm not out and life's not over. So I was 49 years old when it happened and I I still have a full life ahead of me and I'm living it. Um, I've done a zero G experience in a 727 going weightless inside the airplane that astronauts go weightless in. Um, I've done all sorts of things, traveled the world, uh, written a book now, and um, there's just so much more to life. You paralyzed. Yeah, well, and when I wrote the book, it was, you know, basically uh, two fingers with my left hand typing on a computer um, after working a full day uh, at an airline teaching. And I was still at that point trying to figure out how to uh, stand. Uh, I was working with a number of uh, therapists um, outside of the medical field doing things holistically. And, and all those things were helping me. Uh, the therapists were helping me. Um, I used to tell them when I would show up for my therapy session, you know, listen, I'm here to work. I'm not here to play or whine or anything else. Um, you know, I'm going to give you 100% and I expect 100% back out of you uh, while we're working. So uh, I meant business and I, whatever I was going to get back for walking, I was going to be grateful for. And whatever I didn't get back, okay, I'll work around it. So, um, you know, six months, uh, well, less than six months after I got out of the hospital, I got out of the hospital in... August of 2012, August 9th, and in December, I was in Paris with my family, um, and again, it, you know, walking was ugly, and there was a lot to do, but um, the only person I was in a race with was me, and I wasn't in a race. I, I mean, honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of speechless, trying to get for show. <laughs> But again, you, your your journey is so similar to mine. I have my stroke and my aneurysm 47, 47 mm-hmm. years old. But what I really want to touch on, because it, it speaks to me, is now you have two choices. My only two. You have to give in to your stroke. And your stroke is going to define who you are. Are you going to stand up and say, no, I'm going to fight? And you fought. I, I did. You know, when I was in the hospital, uh, two days after the stroke, they moved me over to um, a rehab facility. And the room they moved me into was with a gentleman who uh, lost a leg due to diabetes. And he had given up. And... Uh, The doctors couldn't influence him to do therapy, the nurses. um, So they moved me in the room, and neither one of us could sleep. So we would talk each evening, and I would tell him how he had his whole life in front of him. He had, all he needed was a prosthetic leg, and he could get back into the game and go live his life. And um, unbeknownst to me, the nurse's station was right outside of our door, And the nurses used to listen to me, who's paralyzed, telling this gentleman in the bed next to me, you've still got got a full life ahead of you. And they told me weeks later, they would sit out there each night listening to me talk to him, and they would cry because I was still a question mark at that point. They didn't know from one minute to the next if I was going to survive. And here I am being bright and cheery and trying to uh, help this person, inspire him to get back into his life. Okay, you got kicked and you're you're down at the moment and you've lost a leg below the knee, but life's not over. So um, I, I used to think to myself, and I still do, when I have a hard day, uh, I think about him and um, I... 
I tell myself, you know, things are never that bad. So you should always wear a smile and any chance you get to help somebody else, let that be your fuel uh, when you're having a, a not so good day. Well, Jeff, let me ask you something, because I know you're human. You must go hard times, but uh, when you, you ever get down, where you feel kind of um, stifled, you know, kind of stunted a little bit. Yeah. Right? You, ever, you have those days? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how I, do you get through it? How do you get through those days? Well, we, you know, we all have those days, and... Sometimes on those days, um, I will take a pause. If I'm at work, I'll find a window to go walk over to so I can look up at the sky, so I can look out at some trees, at some birds, at people talking, just watching life going on. And, and I say to myself, isn't it great you get to be a part of that because you fought so hard to get back? So don't keep fighting. Yes, I live through pain every day. I, I still go to therapy um, each week, 10 years later, still doing it. Um, but it doesn't take much for me to realize how much I have and the people that I get to interact with. And, you know, when I, when I think about other disabled people that I get to interact with, um, I, I'm grateful for that. I'm very grateful. They help me be a better person. They help me in, um, you know, when I get to help them or we just get to sit and have a conversation. Um, I'm working with somebody now who has uh, seizures and um, they're minor, but they're there. And isn't it great that I get to be a part of that person's life to help them? So, you know, I can... I can drown myself in the negative or choose not to. And I just always choose not to. If I'm feeling that way, then I'm going to find a way to help somebody else to pull myself out of it. So I guess another way of what I'm saying is um, to find a way to be extroverted and not let the the stress and the trauma of what we go when and when to the extent that it pulls us into being introverted and away from everybody else. So I always do everything I can to get out there and be a part of the world and be social again. Um, th those things are important. Y you know, we look at what we went through with COVID when that first started and here while that was going on, you could see normal people who were introverted by the trauma of, of COVID. And, you know, to some extent, they were kind of living what, what we live from time to time. And uh, the parallels to me were quite interesting. And it's interesting to me to talk to people who in the beginning were afraid to get out because of COVID to say, look, get back into your life again and get out there and be social and find a way to help other people. Uh, it always brings a smile when you help somebody else. You know, the, there's two things you brought, just brought up that I really want the audience to hear. One, you, you, you decided, you chose Basically, you were, every stroke survivor out there I know in the world is faced with the choice. One, give up. Mm -hmm. Two, choose to fight. Choose to bring your bike back. And then the cherry on the top of Sunday, so to speak, is be grateful. Absolutely. Be thankful for your life. And you also use your stroke to and your predicament and your, your car down life to help people. I do the same thing. I find that there is being a servant to people is the most selfish thing you could do. Why? Because 
what you get back, right? You get back uh, amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's where the fuel is. That's absolutely where the fuel is. Um, you know, I, I remember four years into this, telling myself with all the hard work I was doing with therapy, it was time to go on a vacation and um, I was going to do the most impossible thing in the world to some, but this was just me. And I, I chose to go to Nepal for two weeks. And um, while I was there, uh, I chartered a helicopter to take me to Mount Everest. And the reason I wanted to go there, I, I landed at a plateau at 18,500 feet, managed to get out of the helicopter on my own. My lungs felt like they were on fire from the lack of oxygen but i got out of that helicopter and i stared at the tallest mountain in the world and told it i don't need to climb any more mountains and then while i stood there i thought to myself every person i thanked in my mind every person that helped me get to that point and later that day we fly back into lukla airport the most dangerous airport in the world um fly in there to refuel uh i had a sherpa helping me in the little village to walk around and when i got back to the helicopter there was a lady crying trying to talk to the helicopter pilot and i asked the sherpa helping me what was wrong and she was telling me or he was telling me that the lady's husband died two days earlier and she was trying to find away back to Kathmandu where we just came from so she could get to the hospital to say goodbye to her husband since he just passed and I asked the Sherpa to take me over to the helicopter and I said to him hey we got an extra seat it's my charter today and she's going and he said okay and we got her in a helicopter got her to Kathmandu um, my guide and his wife helped me um, get her into a cab to go to the hospital. And for the first time in four years, I got to help another human being. And that was the greatest thing in my life. I felt, I felt so honored and so privileged to do that. Um, a couple of days later, my guide and his wife were asking me, what was the most exciting thing you did? And they said, we understand if it takes you a while to answer that. And I said, it only takes me a second. I said, being able to help that lady get to Kathmandu yeah. to go say goodbye to her husband, that was the most important thing to me, to help another human being. I can do all these other adrenaline junkie things any time in my life, but how often do you get to help another human being? And I felt so grateful for that, that I got to do that. And that's how I go through life. Um, and that's the stuff that helps me maintain being positive. Um, you know, after I got out of the hospital and I went to Paris with my family, my two nephews, or my nephew and my niece and I took the spiral staircase, 387 steps, I think it is, up to the top of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. And... I was so happy I was able to do that. It, it took effort, but I did it. When it was time to go down, the handrail was on the wrong side. <laughs> All right. and, and I thought, okay, um, well, I can't feel my right hand and I can't use it. And the handrail's on the right to go down. So I thought, well, how am I going to do this? And I wasn't going to let it own me or um, define me or depress me. All I did was I turned around, grabbed the handrail with my left hand, and I went down 387 steps backwards. So, oh so um, it, you know, it worked. Um, my nephew was laughing. My, nep my niece said, you walk too slow. I'll see you at the bottom. And, and my nephew and I just laughed. So, um, uh, but I, you know, that's me. That's, you know, figure out how to build a better mousetrap and, and get on with your life and be able to laugh about things and be happy so
Wow, I mean, <laughs> okay, watch out. I need you to write you in public. I'm about to spot. You and I are going to do another podcast together someday, okay? <laughs> okay. You got it. <laughs> All right. Because I, I, well, I think on, I want stroke survivors, because every stroke survivor I know out there has that ability to actually change their mindset. Oh, yeah. And something, kind of something fresh I bring to the table in the stroke community, and something fresh that you're bringing to the table in the stroke community is about mindset. It's about how you feel, how you think. And, you know, you could have listened to the doctor and said, okay, you're not going to walk, your life is over. Not going to walk, game, but you didn't. Your mindset was, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to live my life. In fact, I'm going to live the best life I can live. And that, that's amazing, bro. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, it. We, we all have to find that. We we all have to see and acknowledge each other and tell each other we're there for each other. Um, you know, we we have to put extra effort into what we do each day with each movement. And um, I always try to look at things like with movement and that it is a little more difficult that each time I am moving and I'm putting another foot in front of me, um, that by the grace of God, I got to do that. And having a positive outlook and all the hard work allowed me to get that foot in front of me again to take another step. Um, all the hard work allowed me to go on these vacations just to go do it. But even if I couldn't afford to go on a vacation, I can go for a walk down the street. I can talk to somebody else who's walking on the street. Even if I stop for a few minutes holding on to a cane, I can do that. I can stop and I can acknowledge that the sky's pretty, the breeze feels good on my face, the warmth of the sun feels good on my face. All those little things that make up mindfulness and things that allow us to be appreciative are the things that we should grasp with both hands and say thank you and enjoy and be grateful for another day of life. Oh, that's, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a inspirational that I commonly post. And it says gratefulness is a magnet for miracles. Mm -hmm. I believe, just like you, your living proof, but I'm living proof, that if you keep grateful, if you find yourself bird singing, the wind in your face, the sun in your face, and say thank you, and just begin to be grateful for your life, that the universe, the energy comes back at you. And next thing you know, getting flooded with miracles in life. And now seeing yourself accomplish things, things that, are not, that you're not supposed to be able to do, like go to Nepal or fly around the world or whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean. You're absolutely you, right. You, you couldn't have said it better. You are absolutely right. Um, you know, when we when we put effort in, we we get nice things in return. So those are the kinds of things to focus on and not focus on, you know, my trauma was, you know, more than somebody else's. It, it, it's trauma. It doesn't need to be quantified. Um, we're all living through it uh, in one way or another. And we need to be able to, you know, embrace it and say, okay, here it is. But uh, put it on the shelf and figure out a way to do something happy each day, do something good for you each day, help somebody else, else each day. Those things are important. They're very, very important to our healing and to our moving on. 
okay, you can't do some of the uh, maybe sports or, or something that you enjoyed before doesn't mean you can't find a new one or a new hobby that you can do and that you can embrace and wrap your arms around and be happy for it, to give yourself something to look forward to each day. So those are the things that are important to all of us, whether we have a handicap, a disability or not. Um, we, we do have the ability to find happiness in our lives. Well, I don't even, I, I'm on the commute line, so amazed at what you're saying. Again, I can't, our, our show is over, it's Passover, but, you know, I, I want to be back in my show, bro, when you can. I, I, Aaron, I will come back anytime you would like to have me, and I would be especially honored to be here. Um you know, I earlier this summer, I said to myself, um, I'm going to swim 50 miles this summer and um, and I'm going to swim 30 miles in July because July was my 10th anniversary with this. And um, um, and I swam a mile each day every day of July. And um, uh, and then I kept swimming. Uh, and next year, I'm going to do more um, just because I can. Does it take more effort? Yeah. But it, those are the things that are important. Um, and we have to spread the message. And I'm so grateful that you do with your show. People need this. Um, they need to hear that their life's not over. It, it's it's just so important. I really appreciate that, Jack. Come and feel means a lot to me. And I want to remind the audience that if you enjoy this content, please smash that like button and hit subscribe, share this video, and subscribe to Stroke TV Media on YouTube. Jeff, I will do it. I feel I can't get that. I I can keep talking, but. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it next show. But I want to say one thing. Sure. The biggest ball of strict survivor you've got to climb in this life as a strict survivor is the one you build your own mind. It is your mind that you have to climb that wall. It's not real. You can have life at stroke. You can. Yeah, yeah right, Jeff? I mean, yeah. we're proof of it. You can. Yeah, we. And. and I'm glad you just said that, too. Um, we are proof of it, and more people need to be proof of it. Um, and we need to be there for those that are struggling and trying to find that new gear to be able to pedal it forward and not be stuck thinking, my life is over. Um I wish I could talk to people every day to tell them your life is not over and and to just continue to give examples um, to help others. Um, but like I say, anytime you would like to have me back, Aaron, I would be absolutely honored to always come back. It, it This means so much to me, and I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am that you wanted to spend 30 minutes with me. Okay, now I'm going to start crying, so I've got to be careful, because I do, I'm sure if I cry like that, it happens. But Jeff, thank you so much for doing the show, but I think you'll be near on the audience again. Smash that like button, share this video, but somebody needs it. I and, will definitely. Yep. And definitely, uh, be t stay tuned. Every Wednesday, we're on Stroke of TV Media on YouTube, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Jeff, thank you so much, Brendan. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, too. Um, happy holidays, my friend. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you, bye. 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 bye.